Project Veritas exposes CNN. The police officer that shot Dante Wright in Minneapolis has resigned. Rashida Tlaib demands the end of policing and incarceration. And we have Jason Whitlock being suspended from Twitter. And I have a lot to say about that. Welcome to the Bald Brad Show, and before we get into our lead story, please take a moment to hit that like button. It does help support my channel and push my videos out there to viewers who have not seen my content. And also, if you enjoy the Bald Brad Show, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as that bell notification button so you are notified whenever we go live, which is every Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And in the future, we do plan on doing Saturday and Sunday shows. And for our lead story of the day, it comes from our friends over at The Daily Wire. If you're not already a subscriber, please go over and become a member today. It is written by Ryan Savidra, and he titles it CNN Director. We worked to oust Trump. We create propaganda, use fear to pass climate agenda. Now, this is a story that talks about Project Veritas exposing CNN. It is some great stuff. It starts off by saying James O'Keefe's Project Veritas released explosive video on Tuesday that showed CNN technical director Charles Chester, or excuse me, Charlie Chester, admitting that the network worked to get Donald Trump out of office and that the network creates propaganda on issues they know little about. While explosive, the footage likely will not come as a surprise to many because CNN's already polling really low numbers, and we can all see past the veil of what CNN was doing to Trump. Night and day, they were attacking the guy. They were making fictitious stories about the person, as Trump would call fake news. You know, so this does not come as a surprise, but it is nice to have evidence that we can use as ammo, figurative ammo, uh, to fight the good fight against the leftist narrative that is trying to destroy this country. It goes on to say, on CNN and its employees working to oust Trump from office, Chester made the following remarks throughout various encounters that he had with an undercover Project Veritas journalist. I'll go ahead and roll the footage. I think I, I think we got him through this term. We would always show shots of him jogging. Him in aviator shades and like, a, like you paint him as a young geriatric. We were creating a story there that we didn't know anything about. You know, we were... So that's, that's, I think that's probably it. Look what we did. We got Trump back. I am 100% going to say it. And I 100% believe it, that if it wasn't for CNN, I don't know that Trump would have got voted out. Our focus was to get Trump out of office, right? Without saying it, that's what it was, right? So our next thing is going to be for climate change awareness. Do you think it's going to be just like a lot of like fear? Like climate? Yeah, fear sells. Fear sells. No one ever says it, those things out loud, but it's obvious. And what is it you do? Technical director, it's one step down from director. It's, our, it's going to be our focus. Like, uh, like our, our focus was to get Trump out of office. Without saying it, that's what it was. Trump uh, was hand was shaking or whatever, and he was losing it. He's unfit. We were creating a story there. So that's, that's, I think that's probably it. As you see in the footage, you can tell that CNN has an agenda. They have a narrative. And I thought it was kind of interesting when the technical director was talking about how uh, the leader of CNN or the person that ran the show, forgive me, I forget the person's name, but they had their own counsel. It makes me wonder who that counsel comprises of and if they are in communication with other networks to craft a story and push that same narrative. And the reason why I bring this up is a lot of times you'll see those um, montage cuts of different news outlets almost saying the exact same sentence, the exact same phraseology. And so I really do wonder if they are all communicating with one another. There was a story, and maybe some of you remember this, this was many, many years ago, that there was an email chain or thread or a combination of emails working together to craft narratives and create stories that, that they would push out to the American public. And so I wonder if CNN is still doing that a different way with meeting with the heads of CNN to craft narratives or stories. It sure seems like it because now they're pivoting away from Trump after quote unquote being the ones that helped remove him from office. And I think that there is some truth to that. Absolutely. Of through what they were pushing for years, created a, a mentality for Trump on the left that ended up them 
not liking him at the end of the day. And so I think their involvement definitely helped Trump get removed and not get enough votes. But also at the same time, you see them crafting future narratives here on what they're going to push, which is, I guess, going to be climate change or global warming or whatever the new narrative is. But it's nice, again, just for us to have ammo and have evidence to know that, hey, we're not totally crazy here, that we are seeing in reality what we're seeing. Now, the odd thing is the left isn't seeing what we're seeing or they are seeing what we're seeing and they're just not admitting it. So it's one or the other. (laughs) It's very binary. It's either you see it or you don't see it. And if you're seeing it and not and, and pretending not to see it, then you're just a liar, which that could be as well. So maybe it's not totally binary. Maybe, <laughs> maybe there's something else in between. But with that being said, that is what's going on with Project Veritas. I did want to highlight that story. Now, there is an update on what is going on with that police shooting that happened the other day in Minneapolis. We have Kim Porter, police officer who shot Dante Wright, resigns. It starts off by saying Kim Porter, 48, the Minnesota police officer who was identified as the person who fatally shot a 20 year old man after he tried to resist arrest, resigned from her job Tuesday. I like the fact that the Daily Wire puts 20 year old man has nothing to do with his skin color, had nothing to do with anything else other than the fact he was a 20 year old man. That is it. Okay. yes, he evaded arrest and got back in his car and all that other stuff, but they're not throwing race into this. And I really, really like that. Porter, a 26-year-old veteran, doesn't say that she's a woman, doesn't say that she's white, perfect, of the Brooklyn Center Police Department just north of Minneapolis, submitted her resignation letter to officials, city officials, the Star Tribune reported. Porter is record, uh, reported as saying, I have loved every minute of being a police officer and serving this community to the best of my ability, but I believe it is in the best interest of the community, the department, and my fellow officers if I resign immediately. Porter's resignation comes only days after she fatally shot Dante Wright, 20, during a traffic stop on Sunday. Police officials said Monday that they believe the officer meant to fire her taser, which comes from the video when she pulls out her gun, but she's saying taser, 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 ends up shooting the guy once and then can't believe what she just did. Um, She is quoted and she says, holy S, I just shot him. And, you know, again, like I said in the last video from yesterday, I think this is going to be a clear case of probably manslaughter. So she's done, so lost her career. Hopefully, you know, maybe she can get a pension to, if she has a family that she can support them. Uh, but it says here that Brooklyn Center Police Chief Tim Gannon, who believes the shooting was unintended, said officers are trained to yell taser before firing. As I watched the video and listened to officers' commands, it is my belief that the officer had the intention to deploy their taser, but instead shot Mr. Wright with a single single bullet. So this overall is just, it's a tragedy. It has nothing to do with race. And you have these people out there looting, stealing new, new Nikes, you know, uh, looting up a Walmart. And, you know, these businesses support this stuff. They've come out and said, hey, you know, that's fine. Whatever. Take what you want. The, the crazy thing is, is that they're sitting here just totally on board for this stuff happening, which is mind blowing because it has nothing to do with race. It's just a tragedy that happened. And it shows you that these people will riot for any reason. It doesn't have to be uh, a race involved shooting. It could just be that some black man, whether it was a good shoot or a bad shoot, they're going to riot regardless. If that guy shot a police officer straight in the face and killed him and then he was shot and killed, they would still go riot. They would say it's a, they didn't have to, he didn't have, they didn't have to shoot the guy. He killed an officer. They didn't have to shoot him. Oh, why'd you do that, man? Come on. Like, it's crazy. That was, that was a Joe Biden impression. It wasn't good, but you know, come on, man. But it's just, come on. It it, it is crazy. The fact that they're going to go out and pull this crap and there's people out there supporting them. So. That is the update in regards to the police officer who shot Dante Wright. And also in terms of this, it doesn't just end there, but we have Rashida Tlaib here. This is being reported by the Daily Wire. It says Rashida Rashida Tlaib demands end of policing incarceration after Dante Wright is killed by police. This is how crazy the left is. I mean, they are batshit crazy, man. The fact that you could sit there and go out and make a public statement that you want to end policing and incarceration... That's like, that's some nutso stuff, man. I, you know, that's something you'd almost expect now from Joe Biden to say because he's not coherently all there. But supposedly she's all there in the head. I don't think she's right in the head. That's just my opinion. You can either agree with it or not. But when you're saying no more policing and incarceration, dude, that is like, 
radical, man. Very, very radical. I don't even think Democrats would agree with that. I don't think the vast majority of, I hope the left wouldn't agree with it, but who knows? The Democratic Party and the left are moving, transitioning to a whole different party, a whole different radical ideology. And if that's what they want to go with, I'm hoping they push this story here. I'm hoping Democrats run with this story. It is such a losing story that you're basically handing the nomination, but also the office of the presidency to whoever's running in the Republican party. You're just handing it to them. So I pray for the love of God, please run with this as far as you freaking can. But it says here, Rashida Tlaib, Democrat from Michigan called Monday for the end of policing and incarceration, claiming law enforcement systems are so broken. They can't be reformed. I had to pause there. Cause I still don't believe it. <laughs> it's too good to be true, man. A leftist person say some outlandish stuff. Not that it doesn't happen on a weekly basis, don't get me wrong, but I mean, <laughs> this is too good. Tlaib's comments come one day after Dante Wright, a black man from Minnesota, was shot and killed during an encounter with police officers triggering immediate protest in Brooklyn Center, a small town not far from Minneapolis. So this is what her exact post was. In response, Tlaib, uh, Tlaib, Tlaib declared Wright's death was no accident, but the outcome of a corrupt and racist law enforcement system. I don't even know if it was an accident or not. I'm just saying it looks like it could be an accident and I'm open-minded to be changed on or have an open mind to be changed on it. But I don't know how you could come out of that video going, there was no accident. She meant to shoot the guy. I, I, I don't know. I mean, could it have not been an accident? Maybe. It doesn't look like that on the video. We'll know later on because I'm sure there's going to be a trial. There's definitely going to be lawsuits, all this stuff. And But you have Rashida Tlaib, typical person, coming out, pushing a narrative and ideology by saying that the system is racist and the law enforcement system is racist. Everything's racist, folks. Your shoes are racist. Remember when they said milk was racist because milk was white? Do you guys remember that? <laughs> it's just... Uh, this is the crap we put up with in 2020, 2021, huh? What a time to live. What a time to live, right? And it's not, honestly, it's it's a it's a comedic time to live. Or it, it is. I mean, I was going to say something else, but it is a comedic time to live. I mean, this stuff's not comedic in the sense of a, a man being shot accidentally. That is terrible. That's, that's not even funny. But the, the outcry of them trying to attribute racism to everything and how silly it's gotten by saying milk is racist and the the establish establishments racist when the establishments predominantly run by the left right so the left i guess inherently is racist but uh, the law enforcement system's racist your shoes are racist your eyebrows are racist your hat's racist this camera's racist <laughs> yeah racist it's just come on man it's and the sad thing is is that we literally take it as a joke now especially me like when you just say everything's racist it's i just laugh about it it's not even taken seriously which the idea of racism is so evil and it's so wrong that it shouldn't be laughable it's not something that we should be laughing about but when you have crazy people like this on the streets just yelling to the stars that we need to get rid of policing and incarceration because of racism you can't help but laugh at it because it's so crazy she writes it wasn't an accident talib said Policing in our country is inherently and institutionally and intentionally racist. I added the institutionally there. So she just said it was intentionally racist. Duante Wright was met with aggression and violence. Well, that's kind of one-sided picture. I mean, he could be have started the violence, maybe. Uh, we won't talk about how he had a rap sheet, all that other stuff, but we'll just paint the police and you know as bad and racist and all this other stuff. I am done with those who condone government-funded murder. No more policing, incarceration, and militarization. It can't be reformed. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> at least she's clear with her viewpoints. You know what I mean? You got to give her that. Try to give credit where credit is due. She is clear of what she wants. Look, she thinks it can't be reformed. So, hey, do away with it. You know, it, this is going to be a really weird kind of off the cuff thing, but there's some people that don't think that prisoners can be reformed. Should we just do away with them? You know, that's kind of what you're saying. There is an analogy there of like, look, well, if something can't be fixed, then, well, screw it. Do away with it. Get rid of it. Make sure it doesn't exist anymore. Um, but here she thinks that police incarceration and militarization can't be reformed. So let's just go ahead and do away with it. it, it it's nuts. So Talib also retweeted represented, 
uh, Ayanna Presley, who's a Democrat from Massachusetts, who declared policing a, policing a public health crisis. <laughs> Gee, come on, man. Uh, where's the statistics on that? That's a public health crisis. Uh, <laughs> so what's the connection there? Policing is a public health crisis. Mass incarceration is a public health crisis. Housing injustice is a police health crisis. I can't get through this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh god. Uh you guys don't understand. I try to hold it together so bad that literally my eyes start watering. This is I don't read a lot of this stuff beforehand as you've as I've mentioned to you. It's almost like a reaction show in a way. <laughs> uh, I'm not even gonna finish. Racism is a is a public health crisis. It's, come on, man. <laughs> uh uh You know, and the left get upset when you start laughing. You know what I mean? They get so pissed. They get so aggravated when you're sitting there on camera or in front of them. And and they're saying just crazy ass stuff. And you start laughing in front of them because it's funny. It's stuff that you're like, how can you make this up? How can this stuff come out of a human brain? And they're the ones that are running this country and representing people, Americans. And they got elected. I know high schoolers that are smarter than them. That's nothing against high schoolers. It's just they haven't been around on this planet long enough to learn as much stuff as as these people had a possibility of learning. And they're just roaming around, just walking freely, folks, getting elected. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Well, with that being said, (laughs) it was asked on Jen Psaki if if Biden kind of agreed with Tlaib here. And this news story comes also from Blaze Media. It is titled Biden backs away from Rashida Tlaib's call to end all policing. This is written by Carlos Garcia. And it starts off by saying the White House refused to endorse Representative Rashida Tlaib, Democrat of Michigan, in her call to end all policing in the wake of an officer involved death of 20 year old Duante Wright during a traffic stop Sunday afternoon in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki was asked on Tuesday whether President Joe Biden would endorse the radical policy, and rightfully so, very radical policy, espoused the far left-wing congresswoman. Look, what I can state from here is that um, that's not the president's viewpoint. (laughs) So basically what you have happening here. It's almost like that scene from old school where Will Ferrell's all drunk in front of the party and we're going streaking. And then he goes streaking and then there's nobody else behind him backing him up on the streaking. (laughs) But you have Rashida Tlaib here that's saying, and police carcerations, you know, it's all racist, all this other stuff. And then she starts going out, spewing all these crazy ideas in the hopes that Joe Biden and all these other people will be behind her and she ain't there. That's exactly what happens in old school. We're going streaking! Yes! No, I'm sorry. Sorry, we're going, we're going streaking through the quad and into the gymnasium. Come on, everybody! Frank? Hey, honey. Hey. What the hell are you doing? We're streaking. We're going up through the quad to the gymnasium. Who's streaking? There's, there's more coming. Frank, get in the car. Everybody's doing it. Now. Okay. (laughs) It goes on to say the president's view is that there are necessary outdated reforms that should be put in place. She continued that there is accountability that needs to happen, that the loss of life is far too high, that these families are suffering around the country, and the black community is exhausted from the ongoing threats they feel. Well, just because you feel something doesn't mean that that threat's actually happening on a statistical basis. So uh, the threat and feel is happening because you have CNN and the media, speaking of Project Veritas, exposing somebody that's saying, look, we're trying to promote fear, literally out there, saying a technical director is saying we're just trying to create fear within the american public the the media is creating fear within these black communities making them think anytime that they encounter a police officer that they're gonna be shot or killed remember that video of the police officers just coming up to meet the little african-american kids and the kids are freaking out crying think that they're gonna get killed by these police officers what well, it makes you wonder what the mom said to them right but also at the same time is that's the that's the the propaganda that's the narrative machine that these mass media companies are promoting is fear within the American public. And that's why it's so important to view or watch conservative shows. So you can kind of calm everything down a little bit. 
feed them the statistics they know and go, look, man, the odds are that you're not going to get shot by a police officer. The odds are you're not going to get pulled over by, by a police officer. If you're doing something wrong, yeah, you're going to get pulled over. If you're breaking the law, you're going to get pulled over. If you didn't turn on your turn signal and you made a lane change, you're probably going to get pulled over. You know, if you ran a stop sign or you did a California roll, if you don't know what that is, it's where you don't come to a complete stop and you just kind of roll through the stop sign. You're going to get pulled over. So there's many reasons as to why you get pulled over. Could there be profiling? Yeah. I'm not for racial profiling, but if you're driving kind of a beat up car, you look like a shady character, white, black, Mexican, whatever you are, if you look shady, I would like the police officers to pull you over. Now that's not a, uh, a popular opinion by some. And I totally understand that. I totally get that. Again, my mind is open on that one to be changed. But, um, as far as right now I'm for, you know, if you're in a, if you're in a nice area and you're in a beat up car, it's kind of like, okay, what are you doing here? Maybe you're visiting family who knows, but, um, it doesn't hurt to ask, Hey, what are you doing? Do you need help with directions or something like that? I don't know. But um, there you have it. Rashida Tlaib just saying outlandish things. You have the Biden administration, thankfully not backing them. So it looks like Joe Biden has some sort of thing going on inside his head, some sort of rattle of the can. Or Jen Psaki just spoke on his behalf while Joe Biden was upstairs sleeping, having his little nap nap time. <laughs> Our last news story comes from Blaze Media. Once again, it is about censorship. Twitter has suspended Jason Whitlock. This is titled Jason Whitlock suspended by Twitter after criticizing Black Lives Matter leader, but he refused to bow to social media giant to get his account back. It starts off by saying conservative journalist Jason Whitlock was suspended by Twitter after he criticized Black Lives Matter co-founder and names the co-founder for her 1.4 million home purchase and 1.4% black Topanga Canyon in Southern California. And I think that criticism is rightfully attributed. And by the way, uh, Jason Whitlock is an African-American, it looks like. Now, could he be something else? Sure. But to me, he looks like he's an African-American man and you know he's ripping Black Lives Matter. But again, it has nothing to do with him being a black man has everything to do with him being a conservative, which is why he was suspended. There's a lot of people that have been out there ripping on this whole black lives matter thing for her buying a $1.4 million house at Topanga Canyon. You know, white people are racist and all this other stuff, but yet you go buy a home that has a 1.4% black community. I'm, you know, it's, it's hard for me to go with black lives matter here. I'm not, I'm not for their movement. I'm for the idea that black lives matter. I mean, a life matters regardless of who you are, but, uh, you know, for him just to criticize it and then be suspended really shows you how far the left are going. And they're not even quiet about it anymore. Look what they're doing with Steven Crowder, Gina Carano, Jason Whitlock. Uh, there was another, uh, beauty influencer, Amanda. I forgot her last name. I believe her first name was Amanda from the daily wire, uh, reported on it. She was suspended or banned from Twitter. And these are all conservatives. And so that's just off the top of my head. People that I know that either been suspended or banned or for whatever reason were removed. President Donald Trump. It says, but Jason Whitlock insisted Monday. He has no intention of bowing to social media giant in order to get his account unblocked. I'm not running to go post Twitter bail when I did nothing wrong. The background of this is that con coolers, callers, coolers, the Black Lives Matter person, I believe, was sharply criticized last week over numerous reports that she had purchased the pricey home, particularly given her self-described Marxist ideology. What's more, reports noted that Khan had purchased three other homes since 2016 for a grand total of $3.2 million in real estate. That's crazy. You're just... And and I heard, I, I heard there was a report here uh, that she bought some of these under a corporate entity. So that to me is a little strange as well, because if it is through black lives matter and you're taking people's donations to try and help the black community and in reality, by helping the black community, you're helping yourself as a black person buy a home that's in an affluently white neighborhood. If I'm saying that correctly, or at least pretty much predominantly a white neighborhood, that's a little weird and strange. Now, do I have a problem with her moving into a white neighborhood? No, of course not. I think anybody's welcome to move wherever the heck they want. But if you're going to push an idea that, you know, white people are always racist and this is a racist country and, you know, you're a Marxist, but yet probably a lot of people living in Topanga Canyon are capitalist business owners, you know, you're, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The only thing that makes sense here is she's a Marxist and she's basically stealing money from Black Lives Matter. So that part does make sense is that Marxist, their ideology is just take and not give. So that part does make sense. 
That part is is crystal clear. <laughs> Upon hearing the news, Hawk Newsom, leader of Black Lives Matter Greater New York City, demanded an independent investigation. Whitlock joined in on the criticism Black Lives Matter founder buys $1.4 million home in Topanga, which has a black population of 1.4%. He tweeted Friday, she's with her people. <laughs> Jeez, man. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just really funny that he would post that. But that I guess that's what got him suspended. That I, That's crazy that that little post got him suspended off Twitter. I've, I've seen worse stuff on Twitter. There's people that post nudes on Twitter and don't get suspended. There's people that say some really, really dark and disgusting stuff on Twitter that don't get suspended or removed. But when a conservative says something, now all Twitter needs to pounce down upon them and remove them, deplatform them, censor them, silence them, get rid of their free speech. Twitter told Whitlock that he violated the platform's rules. Of course, that's always the reason. When have you not seen a reason for Twitter claiming that they that someone violated their rules? For posting personal information about others without their permission. A lot of people do that. Uh, not just conservatives, the media have done that. Uh, other persons have done that. So that's not something that's out of the ordinary. And if you're going to apply that rule to one, you have to apply that rule to all. He added to the Daily Mail that Twitter said I needed to remove the tweet that linked the dirt.com story about coolers buying a house in Topanga. But the outlet noted that there was no explanation of how linking to the dirt.com story revealed personal information as neither the story nor Whitlock's tweeted tweet listed an address and the person also was discussed widely elsewhere on twitter and reported throughout the press but they won't do anything to deplatform them they won't do anything to re remove their tweets the daily mail said twitter didn't respond to its request for comment i think twitter has been looking for an excuse to deplatform me i think whitlock is absolutely right in saying that 100 percent right and it's not just it's not just him right i mean they're finding any excuse to deplatform or silence any conservative the most recent one that's kind of making the the rounds was was uh steven crowder not only was he demonetized off youtube but having issues with twitter being suspended from twitter uh twitter sending him hey you know you're basically going to be blocked from entering the platform for i'm just going to make up the number of days like seven days right like a week and then it will show him a counter and what happened was it went from like six days and 23 hours and it stopped and then like a few hours passed by and the time wasn't continually ticking. So somebody paused the time and they, he, they did this multiple times. And so it really wasn't like a week. It ended up being longer because they were screwing with the guy. And so we know that there's people that work in these institutions that are going out and attacking and making sure conservatives are silenced, making sure conservatives can't get their viewpoint out there, which is why it's so important that you like videos like this. You make sure that you share it on your social media so that one conservative can represent another conservative so that we can get stories like Jason Whitlock's out there so that we can be a voice for him where the conservative voice now is extrapolated to many so that his story could still get out. He could post things he wants. And if I was a bigger, uh, a bigger outlet or a bigger channel, I would reach out to Jason and see, you know, what he wants me to say to everybody else. So I could be his mouthpiece for him and we could do this for other conservatives. Very similar to when, uh, uh, Steven Crowder was suspended on, on YouTube for a bit. He gave Hodge twins a video that he posted on Crowder bits because they wouldn't let him post it even on Crowder bits. And so Hodge twins posted it on their platform for him, allowing basically use allowing, they were his voice for him to get out his message. And I would like at some point for this channel to be the same way for conservatives that are silenced, that we can be their viewpoint so that their freedom of speech can still be utilized through somebody else. And I think that's a great thing about conservatives working together and work. Our channel's growing folks. Our channel's growing. Let's try to get to a thousand. I really want to get to a thousand subscribers fast. And that way more people will click on the video. More people will see conservative ideology, conservative uh, thinking, philosophy, and hopefully we'll get some minds changed here from the left. Hopefully, hey, one vote, one change is great because that person, now that their change can help change somebody else. But that is the news. We have the CNN director working to oust Trump or did work to oust Trump. And now I guess the new agenda that they're going to push is climate change. Who could have thought? We also have the police officer who shot Dante Wright resigning. Rashida Tlaib demands the end of policing and incarceration due to the killing of Dante Wright. You have Biden not supporting Rashida Tlaib. Thank the Lord. And then you have Jason Whitlock being suspended from Twitter for posting a simple tweet about Black Lives Matter founder or leader uh, buying a $1.4 million home and how that's a little hypocritical and contradicting. And I really appreciate 
all of you watching the Bald Brad Show. Please take a moment again to hit that like button. Leave me any random comment you would like. Just make sure that it's appropriate and it's sincere. I really do, I really do love talking to all of you, and I will see you here tomorrow on the Bald Brad Show. <laughs>